Here's how to graph a quadratic function on your calculator. Given the function y equals 2x squared minus 8x minus 4, we're going to do that on our calculator. So let's bring up the graphing calculator. And in order to enter that, I'm going to hit this y equals button right here. And I'm going to enter my function. 2, and now I need to put in an x squared. For x, I'm going to use this button right here that has an x, a t, a theta, and an n on it. And that's going to put in an x. To get that squared, I'm going to hit the x squared button. Now, your calculator might look a little bit different. Um, when you do this, if it puts a little box here by the little superscript 2, by the, the squared, uh, make sure that now you exit out of that box, okay? Because we don't want our next thing, the negative 8x, to be as an exponent. So you might need to use this right arrow key to get out of the box. And then I'll do negative 8x minus 4. Okay, now I want to hit the graph button, which is the upper right hand gray button. And it's going to show me a graph of that quadratic function on my axes. Notice that my axes go from negative 10 in the x direction to positive 10 in the positive x direction positive, or y, um, I'm sorry, in the positive y direction 10 and in the negative y direction negative 10, which is kind of a standard window. But the problem is, is it doesn't show me where my vertex is. Notice my vertex, the bottom of this graph, is going to be off the screen. So finding the vertex is kind of important. So what I need to do is I need to change how far down my y-axis goes. So to do that, I'm going to hit the second gray button here called Window. And notice it's telling me what I saw in my graph, that my minimum x value is negative 10 and my maximum x value is 10. In other words, the graph goes from a negative 10 to a positive 10 on the x. My x scale is 1. That means every little hash mark on the x-axis is 1 unit. Same thing for my y-axis. It goes from a negative 10 down here all the way up to a positive 10. And my y scale is also 1. So since my graph went down below my minimum y value, I'm going to change my y minimum to a negative 15. So that means now my it's going to go from on the y axis from a positive 10 all the way down to a negative 15. So let's hit graph again. Okay, and now I can see the vertex of my graph. I'd like to be able to find out exactly what point that is, and I can do that with a calculator. I'm going to use this Calculate menu, which is above the Trace button. So to access that, I'm going to do Second, Trace, gives me the Calculate menu, and notice all of these different things that I can find. The main thing that I would like to find is, what is my minimum value? Remember from our graph, let's take a look at the graph again. My, my graph is opening upwards, which means that my vertex is going to be a minimum. So, going back to the Calculate menu, Second Trace, I'm going to go down to Minimum, and hit Enter. Notice what it's saying. It's asking me for a left boundary. In other words, the calculator is asking me, how far to the left on this graph do you want me to look for that minimum? And notice there's a little blinky cursor here. It just kind of defaulted to the y-intercept. I'll move it a little bit to the right. And I just need to have my blinky cursor anywhere to the left of my vertex. And I'll hit Enter. Notice it put a little um, triangle up here at the top. Your calculator may show a vertical line going through that blinky cursor. So in other words, that's going to be my left boundary for looking for the vertex. Now it's prompting me for, what do you want the right boundary to be? So again, I'm going to use my arrow key and move my blinky cursor anywhere to the right of my vertex. And it can be anywhere over here. So I've chosen right there. I'll hit Enter. And notice it put another triangle up here. Again, yours may be a vertical line. So now what it's going to do is it's going to look between those two arrows, or between those two vertical lines, for what is the smallest y value, what is the minimum y value in that region. And the calculator is saying, do you want to guess? And I'm like, no, I don't want to, so I will hit enter again. And it's telling me that my minimum y value is at x equals 1.999994 and y equals negative 12. 
So let's interpret this. Is this really 1.9? No. The calculator sometimes isn't super exact. That means basically x equals 2. Suppose I'd gotten something that said x equals 2.0000005. That would also be 2. So my minimum value, which is my vertex, is at the point 2, negative 12. And that was a minimum value. Okay, let's go back and look at the graph again here. So there is my vertex at 2, negative 12. Now, suppose, oh, before, oh, sorry, before we do that, we need to figure out what is the axis of symmetry. Remember, the axis of symmetry is the line that goes through the vertex, a vertical line through the vertex, about which the parabola is symmetric. So my, the equation of the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals whatever the x value of my vertex is, 2. Now remember, this is an equation. So it's not just 2, it's x equals 2, because that's the equation of the vertical line that goes through the vertex of my parabola. Next thing I'd like to find is, what is the y-intercept? OK, let's go back and look at the graph. Remember, the y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis. And that's a little hard to see. I guess I could kind of zoom in on it a little bit if I'd like. But the easiest way to do that is to go back to your, your function, and your y-intercept is going to be whatever c is. So in this case, my y-intercept is negative 4. <clears throat> now what I'd like to do is make a table of values. To do that, my calculator can do that, I'm going to use this table function right here. So I'm going to hit second graph. <clears throat> And you'll notice that it put in some values for me. But suppose you don't want it to put in the values for you. Suppose you want to put in whatever x's you want it to be. To do that, I'm going to go to the table setup, which is right here above the window button. So second, table setup. And notice it's telling me to start my table at 0, make the change in my table values to be 1. It's going to automatically put in the independent variable, which is the x, and then it's going to automatically put in the dependent variable, which is the y. But I want to be able to put in my own x's. So I'm going to arrow down and arrow over so that the box after independent it, that says ask is highlighted. Hit enter. Now, what the calculator is going to do is ask me to put in what x's I want. What values do I want for my independent variable? Then it's going to automatically give me my y's. So let's go back to table, that second graph, and you'll notice my x's are empty. So I'm going to pick my x's. But geez, which x's do I want? Let's look at the graph again. Notice that it's kind of, I think maybe I'll zoom in. I could zoom in a little bit on the x-axis here. Let me do that. So I'm going to go to Window. And I'm going to make my x minimum, let's say, negative 3. And let's make my x maximum, how about a 6. So now I can see a little better what's going on on my x-axis. All I did was zoom in and made my minimum x value negative 3 and my maximum x value a 6. So I think I'm going to start my table at probably negative 1, because remember, one of the things I want to do is to be able to solve the related equation, so I want to see where it crosses the x-axis. So I'm going to make my table from negative 1 all the way up to positive 5. <clears throat> so second graph to get the table, and I'll just start inputting my values. Negative 1, enter, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there's my table of values. Let's copy that onto our worksheet here. This will also make it easy if you need to graph it yourself. So negative 1 was 6, 0 was negative 4, 1 is negative 10, 2 is negative 12, 3 is negative 10, 4 is negative 4, and 5 was 6. And notice you'll get again that symmetry in your y values. My vertex is right here in the middle of my table, and then the x values surrounding that are going to be equal to each other. 
Okay, so that's how you make a table. Pretty nifty feature, and like I said, if you need to then graph this on a sheet of graph paper, there are your values right there. Now what I need to do is figure out what are the domain and range of this function. So let's take a, another look at the graph here. It looks to me like x can be anything. So my domain is going to be all real numbers, and my y value, my range, <clears throat> because the graph is going up, and because this point right here, my vertex, is a minimum, all of my y values are going to be greater than whatever the y value is at this point. So my y is going to be greater than or equal to negative 12. So for my domain, it's going to be all real numbers, and my range is going to be the set of all y such that y is greater than or equal to negative 12. And the reason I got that is my vertex is a minimum and y and negative 12 is my minimum is my y value there and notice all of my other y's are getting greater than that. Now the last thing I'd like to do is to get the solutions of the related equation. In other words, let me write this out here. So in other words, if I were to take the y out and substitute that with a 0, so 2x squared minus 8x minus 4 equals 0, what are the values of x that make that true? Or in other words, as we could see from the graph, where does it cross the x-axis? Because I'm going to have a solution right here, and I'm going to have a solution right here. So notice that those are not nice points. It's not like it's going exactly through negative 1 or exactly through positive 5. So looking at the graph, I can see that I have one solution right here between negative 1 and 0, and I have another solution here between 4 and 5. So here's how you, I would like you to write your answer. So between negative 1 and 0, and the way I'd like you to write it is like this. Negative 1 is less than x, which is less than 0. That means x is between negative 1 and 0. And my other solution was between 4 and 5. And I'd like you to write it like this. 4 is less than x is less than 5. Okay? Let's take a quick look at the table to confirm that. Notice that I have a change in my y values. y right here is positive 6, and y right here is negative 4. So somewhere in between there, y is going to equal 0. And that's what I'm looking for. And somewhere in here, it goes from, here it goes from negative 4 to positive 6. Somewhere in there, y is also going to equal 0. And notice that change from positive to negative happens when x is between negative 1 and 0, as I found down here. And again, my change from a negative y to a positive y is between when x equals 4 and x equals 5, which is what I found down here. So you can find the solutions of the related equation by looking at the graph and by looking at the table. So there's a whole lot of information on how to graph a quadratic function on your calculator, how to find the vertex, whether it's a maximum or minimum, equation of the axis of symmetry, y-intercept, domain range, table of values, and how to find the solutions of the related equation.